Hello there, YouTube. I am Necrostevo. <laughs> <laughs> and it is time for us to embark yet again on another battle in the Pokemon Premier League Season 2, week number 4. Our opponent this week is the illustrious J. Ricky, and his information will be in the comment section for you to check him out. Of course, we will always start with the team builder, but if you prefer to jump straight into the action, there will be a timestamp for that as well. For the unacquainted, J. Ricky is a well-storied draft league battler, most recently in the PPL Bolt League. He was also in the WPF and uh, several other drafts. Uh, so he has a lot of draft league content on his channel for you to check out. I actually started watching him in the BBR um, where he got all the way to playoffs. So I knew that this matchup was going to be very fun to prep for and just such a talented opponent. So be sure to check him out and let's take a look at the matchup. You can see that he has access to Gouging Fire, Manaphy, Ting Lu, Slitherwing, Hatterene, Skarmory, Cyclozar, Miss Magius, Ninetales, Victory Bell, Hisuian Sneasel, and Ampharos. That's right, it's time for the Sun Mirror Match. The prophecy is true. Now, how in these dark realms do we play this matchup? I had basically three options here. Number one, I could forego my weather in hopes of not powering up his sun abusers. Two. I could also try to bring hail and do my best to get rid of his sun and sweep with the titan. Three. Or I could just bring the straight up sun matchup as well. You can see on here that I had him on speed tiers outside of the Cyclozar um, with Mousehold and Dodrio and Zepstrika and even Terrakion outspeeding the majority of his team. That being said, he had a great trick room option with the Hatterene with things like the Ting Lu and the Ampharos to, uh, to back it up. With this matchup, I ended up going Drum roll, please. With Dodrio holding the power herb. With just 216 speed, that means that I can outspeed max speed gouging fire. And I went with sky attack so that it would activate immediately with the power herb. Acrobatics so that after um, I lost my item, I'd have a continually boosted move because acrobatics doubles in damage if you don't have an item. Low kick and swords dance. Now here I was going to be a little bit tough to nab a swords dance boost, but I figured I could do it against Skarmory, um, against Ting Lu, either of them trying to set up entry hazards. I could also possibly do it against something um, like Ninetales, depending on if he was like a supportive set or something like that. Terra flying though with acrobatics or Terra flying sky attack was a really good one-time use nuke against a lot of things here, and I really like the speed tiers against his team. Up next, I went with Terrakion with the Choice Scarf, just to, number one, be a secondary check to something like Gouging Fire, getting a, a speed boost, whether it be through Scale Shot or through um, Dragon Dance. It also allowed me to be a secondary check to something like um, Manaphy trying to set up and, um, or even a Scarf Manaphy. I wasn't sure what he would bring. I was really expecting to see Gouging Fire, Manaphy, Ting Lu, Hatterene, um, Skarmory, and maybe the Slitherwing or the Hisuian Sneasler. So I just wanted to make sure that I had something in the back for if the Gouging Fire got out of hand. <laughs> with a Choice Scarf, I could always outspeed it. And then we went with Stone Edge, Close Combat, Rock Slide, and Sacred Sword. Sacred Sword is there just in case something like the Manaphy, or even to a lesser extent the Skarmory, get a bunch of defensive boosts. Sacred Sword ignores those defensive boosts and allows me to hit right through those. I also went with Rock Slide over Stone Edge because I have a terrible 
terrible track record of hitting stone edges, especially when it matters the most. And so Rock Slide is here. Uh, the secondary flinch chance is also nice, but primarily I just want to hit the darn move. Hello? Is this the give a darn store? After that, I did decide to bring my walking wake so we get the walking wake versus gouging fire matchup. Walking wake is naturally faster, but I would have to watch out for mana fee because mana fee, especially with something like an assault vest or running the take heart, which boosts his special attack and his special defense, could basically wall out my walking wake. I went with weakness policy expecting Manaphy to be what my walking wake would be facing at some point. And one of the new moves that Manaphy picked up is Alluring Voice. And um, I was just prepared for walking wake to get hit by a super effective attack. And with Draco Meteor, um, Flip Turn, Hydro Steam, and Scald, that would mean that I could hopefully use a Draco Meteor and then the Manaphy would hit me with a super effective move and I would get plus two special attack, which would basically reset me and I could use it again. Alternatively, if I got hit by um, like a draining kiss or um, other coverage move across this team there, since I'm so fast and the protosynthesis boost here is further boosting my special attack if the sun is up, um, I only needed enough speed, 224 speed down speed of max speed Miss Magius. Um, it was very likely for the mana fee to come, and so that's why I like flip turn here just to get out of there and go into something else. That something else in this situation would be my Venusaur. And Venusaur I went with Power Whip, Poison Jab, Weather Ball, and Sleep Powder. I only needed enough speed to outspeed his Victory Bell, and then the rest is just going all into attack and HP. Here I really enjoyed the physical Venusaur because something like Ting Lu with its uh, uh, Vessel of Ruin ability there would um, really annoy any of my special attackers. So if I go physical, that gives me a much stronger hit on Ting Lu, a stronger hit on Mana Fee, uh, which would be very likely invested to deal with the Walking Wake. And same thing for the likes of Hatterene. On the downside, that does force out um, any of those physical stab options on my Venusaur with the Skarmorian. But with Weather Ball and zero investment in the Life Orb, I still one-shot the Skarmory and Sun. So I really enjoyed uh, those options there. I also had Sleep Powder here because with Weather Ball, Power Whip, Poison Jab, there might be a situation where I'm trying to call something swapping in, or um, if he doesn't have the Hatterene, then I get to basically launch off a free sleep powder in the sun and put something to sleep. And then I could go for the appropriate coverage move after that. After that, we do have Galarian Sloking with the Shuka Berry. I was expecting Shuka Berry because, or rather I was running Shuka Berry because Gouging Fire can use Earthquake, Ting Lu can use Earthquake, and I was expecting to take that ground move from either one of them and then just get some additional damage or my Toxic Spikes up. I went with Sludge Bomb, Ice Beam, Toxic Spikes, and Chili Reception here because I'm going with a lot of special defense investment uh, in order to not only sit in here on the Hatterene in case it tries to um, bounce back my entry hazards, I can basically wall it out. And if I go for Chili Reception, that allows me to disrupt his son since I am not bringing Torkoal this week. That's right, the last member of the team is Mousehold, just like Terrakion coming off the bench this week. And Mousehold is going to run Population Bomb, Bite, U-Turn, and Tidy Up. Again, just enough speed to outspeed the Miss Magius. And then from there, throw it into HP. Uh, with Population Bomb and Bite, I get basically perfect coverage here against everything. And to put into perspective how strong Mousehold is, I can two hit KO Ting Lu from maximum HP, from full HP, two rounds of Population Bomb will clear it out. Now I did run U-Turn here because I did feel like there might be Rocky Helmet somewhere, whether it's Garmory, Hatterene, the Ting Lu, to a lesser extent, something like the Slithering running a, a bulky set with Morning Sun and Rocky Helmet. I did not want to Population Bomb into the Rocky Helmet because I would kill myself. So you turn allowed me to scout that and tidy up after a tidy up. I can um, also catch anything on his team that's trying to go for his speed mode there. So that is our horrific horde for this week. For the really excited to see two of my Pokemon coming off the bench. And uh, if you're just joining me for the team builder this week, we are bringing Mousehold off the bench 
with the standard population bomb set by you turn and tidy up with the wide lens to make sure that we hit those population bombs. Um, Galarian Sloking is running a Shooka Berry with max HP and almost max special defense, which is Sludge Bomb, Ice Beam, Toxic Spikes, and Chili Reception. Terrakion is running the Choice Scarf with Stone Edge, Close Combat, Rock, uh, Rock Slide, and Sacred Sword. And Walking Wake is running Weakness Policy with just enough speed to outspeed the Miss Magius alongside Draco, Meteor, Hydro, Steam, Scald, and Flip Turn. Our Terra Captain for today's battle is going to be Dodrio with Terra Flying, Power Herb, Sky Attack, Acrobatics, Low Kick, and Swords Dance. And then we have a physically offensive Venusaur running Life Orb with Power Whip, Poison Jab, Weather Ball so that I can hit that Skarmory, and Sleep Powder because I do anticipate being able to put something to sleep and swap out or just kind of go for the more appropriate coverage move instead of always trying to predict every single time. Once again, reminders to go check out Jay Ricky and the Gigaton Hammers, and we'll jump right into the battle now. I'll give you all a little peek behind the curtain here. You can see I was doing my pre-battle prep and just um, going through and checking my sets. And since I do everything on cart, I don't use any engineering surfaces. You can see how I uh, go in and I was like, oh man, let me use some PP ups. <laughs> on some of these moves here and um it's it's just part of my my i always get my team and then i come in and i double triple quadruple check my sets and i always find things that i miss and i won't always pp up every single move for every single pokemon i really pick okay is this a move i'm going to be hitting a lot um like of course you always would max out the power points on slack off or on the main move you think you're going to be clicking a lot but uh, for example, I know I'm only going to click Sky Attack once, so there's no reason to, to max that one out. But I just wanted to let you all see that because I paused it to message J. Ricky, and then I forgot to hit record at the very start of the battle. At the very start of the battle, I ended up leading with my um, mouse hold, and I did that because I wanted to U-turn immediately. But he leads Slitherwing, and I was very afraid of getting hit by a first impression because that would do a ton of damage to me for no reason. And so I ended up hard swapping out to my Galarian Sloking, knowing that if he did go for Earthquake, that would be the the worst case scenario if he went for that on the swap, but I expected him to go for first impression. Um, but on the swap, he actually ends up going for U-turn. So um, not the best start to the battle. I could have stayed in and got it for my own U-turn, but my thought process was, okay, I don't know if he's banded, I don't know if he's life or I don't know if he's going to set up. I don't want to stay in a population bomb here. And so that's why I ended up swapping out there. Now I did take a lot of damage from that U-turn for it being a, a neutrally effective move, but I didn't take as much as I expected. So I, I was like, okay, is, is he, I don't think he's banded. And so since he just went straight for U-turn and he did not go for the first impression, I thought he was a setup set. Um, here he brings in Gouging Fire, and I can take any hit from this range unless he's Choice Banded. And if he's Choice Banded, I can't take anything. Um, but I was confident in the matchup that he was not going to be bringing Choice Band here to, to this matchup just because of how important Gouging Fire was to his team as far as just overall damage. So my thinking was, okay, uh, here I just need to get off some damage on him because if I can just get him in range of something, I'll be good to go. But then he completely evis eviscerates my Galarian Sloking with a Flare Blitz, not even Earthquake. Um, and so that is obviously, very, very obviously choice banded there. And that sucks because now I have to play this game without a swap in to so many of his Pokemon. And Galarian Sloking didn't even get to do anything. Um, on the plus side, since I know he's Choice Bandit from the damage, I can easily bring in my Walking Wake here. And this allows me to either go for the Draco Meteor or the Hydro Steam. Scald is stronger than Hydro Steam if the sun is not up. Um, or I could just flip turn out expecting the Mana Fee. Um, he kind of surprised me here because I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go for raw damage here. And um, he does go right out to the Mana Fee. And I was like, okay, this is gonna do a good amount of damage, let's go. And then it does nothing. That did negligible damage. 
I don't mind showing him here that I am not locked in because I know that he knows based off that damage that I'm not choice specs. Um, if the sun is up, I will get a protosynthesis boost to my special attack, which will help out against the mana fee. But with that very low amount of damage going in on the mana fee, we're just gonna swap out here with flip turn. Uh, if he stays in with mana fee, then that means I get to go out to Venusaur. But if he decides to swap, which he shouldn't, then um, I'm going to assume he's going to knock off or maybe go for a fairy type move. And I did not want to use my weakness policy this early. So that's the other reason I went ahead and swapped out. Bringing in Venusaur here means I get to go for a free sleep powder or I can just power whip immediately. He did not bring Ting Lu to this matchup. So um, I, I was really feeling a sleep powder there. He does go for U-turn of his own. So we're just going for a lot of, um, in this battle already we had two U-turns and a flip turn. And that reminds me of that Usher song. It's called the U-turn. It's just like going in and out, just constant momentum being exchanged here. Unfortunately, I'm always on the, the, the negative side of that momentum, but he does bring in the nine tails. And I was like, okay, I don't really want to try to swap in anything here. If he goes for an attack, walking wake can take basically anything, but that means he's just gonna go back out into the mana fee. And I'm kind of back where I was. And uh, to kind of force some progress here, I decided to stay in and go for uh, the sleep powder thinking that at worst he could stay in and go for maybe a flamethrower or um, a fire blast. Fire blast or overheat could KO me. Flamethrower uh, would not KO me from this range. So I go for sleep powder and I miss. And he goes for overheat, connects, and now I've lost two Pokemon without doing anything. Um, he does also show the eject pack here, which means if his stats are lowered, he swaps out to another Pokemon. And that really sucks because uh, number one, that means that I called that properly and I could have put him to sleep and prevented that. Uh, but now he gets in his Slitherwing and he gets a Protosynthesis boost and I'm just like, ah, man, okay. Let's, um, let's see here. Since he immediately went for a U-turn earlier, and he didn't go for first impression, they had me thinking he was some sort of setup um, set or uh, maybe um, some sort of bulky set. I knew that he wasn't choice banded from the damage on Galarian Slowking earlier. And so I was like, this is a great chance to bring in my Dodrio and threaten him out. And I can also get off the sky attack and burn my items so that way my acrobatics will be stronger later. If he stayed in, I would immediately KO him, even if he had the um, the proper berry to resist, um, to lower the damage from flying type moves. So going out to Dodrio here is just kind of a little bit more aggressive. And I did, I did. I briefly just kind of just checked my team there to go, okay, if I can take out the Slitherwing here, that really frees up um, my mouse hole for later because I was so sure that this was like a bulky Slitherwing, something to kind of take hits or comment on the likes of like my Venusaur, other things like that. Uh, but uh, after the Terra animation, we find out that this is actually a Scarf Slitherwing. And if he's Scarf, that means he outspeeds me and he just one shots my Dodrio with Flare Blitz. So after all these U-turns and after all these pivoting moves, I've lost three Pokemon while functionally, he, the only damage that he's taken is the own recoil that he's done to himself. So he still has all six of his Pokemon and I have three against the world at this point. Since the sun is up and I know he is scarfed and he's locked into that flare blitz, that means that I could go out into my walking wake, get my protosynthesis boost and get a special attack boost. I know that the mana fee is coming back in here, but I need to do, I, I basically am forced into whittling down the mana fee. If he stays in here, a hydro steam will KO him. I don't know why he would stay in and click scarf flare blitz in the sun. Like, yeah, it's, it's boosted by the protosynthesis in the sun. It was also quad resisted by walking wake. So I didn't expect him to stay in and I expected Manaphy to come back in. I could have gone for the flip turn, but uh, if Manaphy did end up being Rocky Helmet and I went, um, which I, I knew actually at that point, did I remember that it was not Rocky Helmet? No, I just wanted to go for Hydro Steam to maximize my damage. Um, and then on this next turn, I was gonna go for a Draco Meteor, hoping that he would go for a Luring Voice. 
The other thing I could have done is swap out into my Terrakion, but that really wouldn't get me anywhere at this point, and I'm also risking that he's going to go for a water type move on the switch, just trying to whittle down or maybe get a Scald Burn on my um, Walking Wake. So after uh, the Protosynthesis boost, you can see that this is a 2-hit KO with the Draco Meteor, and he does go for a Luring Voice, which activates my Weakness Policy, and that means we are back at Neutral Special Attack. That is critical here because without that, I would not be able to KO this mana fee from this range. So we are able to finally take a KO in this matchup with Walking Wake taking out the mana fee. Um, I, I didn't expect this to work out in this way. I just wanted Walking Wake to kind of really heavily damage the mana fee, but I will take removing it from the game completely. Now the downside is since I had to go for that secondary um, move there and lower my special attack again that means that whatever he goes out to basically gets a free hit off i was expecting the gouging fire to come in and um he also could have gone out into um his miss magius and tried to set up on me at this point he does go back out to the gouging fire and even after the drop there i was like do i risk swapping in teraki on here he has to go for the dragon type move right he has to if he goes for a fire type move and I stay in, I get a good amount of damage off and I also have Terrakion to resist that. Um, but I was also worried about him going for a scale shot um, and getting plus one for free and then it'd be um, kind of Terrakion trying to force something here. I end up deciding to stay in at this point and that at least forces him to attack me um, I'm faster and I don't get a crit on the Draco Meteor. If I had been a neutral attack, I would have taken him out. And he does go for Scale Shot. So I could have swapped out to Terrakion there because even after a Scale Shot, I would have been faster. Um, I go out to my Terrakion now, which does kind of scream that I'm either Choice Scarf or that I'm Focus Sash. This has kind of been a, um, a very offensively oriented game so far. And with only Mousehold in the back, I have to take out this Gouging Fire because I was also worried about Gouging Fire's um, other ability because I know that since he's Choice Banded, okay, would he carry the bulwark, the Burning Bulwark just randomly on a Choice Band set? I don't know, but I do know that that would be very annoying for my mousehole to deal with. So here I just go out to my Terrakion and I know I'm going to be faster and so I hit him with the Rock Slide. Don't have to go for Stone Edge, we're just going to go for Rock Slide to ensure um, the best chance of KOing that. The other reason to go for Rock Slide is because since he has Miss Magius in the back, I did not want to lock into a Rock type move and then be forced to, um, a Fighting type move and then be forced to swap back out to Mouse Hold. Rock type moves here enable me to at least kind of go for flinches at this point. Um, I was not um, convinced of my opportunities here. Now, I can't swap out here because Hisui and Sneasel, of course, being a Fighting type means it has super effective coverage against both of my remaining Pokemon and it's faster than both of my Pokemon as well. Now on the plus side, I think I'm faster with the Choice Scarf. I don't think he'd bring Scarf Sneasler, uh, Sneasel. And so I do a good amount of damage with that, but I don't get the flinch and he is able to easily take me out with the close combat there. Um, and I bring in Mousehold expecting this to be game, but then his own eject pack swaps him out and that means that we have a window of opportunity. What is that opportunity? That is to go for tidy up with mouse hold. Depending on whom he brings in here, I get to immediately go for tidy up and that means that I outspeed his entire team with my mouse hold. He goes out into his Miss Magius and Miss Magius does not have a good way of hitting mouse hold to one shot it. Mouse hold comes in and I basically have to click tidy up and pray that I can live any hit and that I don't get crit and that he doesn't have something random like to, to status affect me. So tidy up, goes off, attack and speed boost, and he goes for dazzling gleam, and that does not really do any damage. Here, I'm able to go for bite, and bite would easily KO the Miss Magius, but he surprises me with endure, and I was like, no! Thinking that this was the uh, the Destiny Bond Custat Berry set, I go for another tidy up um, the purpose of that would be if he went for destiny bond this is going to waste his destiny bond on this turn and then on the next turn 
I could go for another tidy up there to kind of um, to force it to expend. He Terra Fairies this turn, and um, that was a good call on his part because if I went for, um, oh wait, I don't have any way to go. I don't. I, I don't know why I was thinking of Walking Wake there. Pardon me, I am tired. But uh, he does not KO me with that Dazzling Gleam, and now since he attacked me, I know uh, I'm faster, and I have plus two attack, plus two speed. It's time. The only thing is that uh, I was worried about the scarf um, on his. Slither wing in the back, but now that I have plus two speed, I know I outspeed it for sure. So I didn't really see a way for him to win at this point because I have plus two speed. So I also outspeed his um, his uh, his swing and sneasel as well. And he has first impression. <laughs> Why this trainer brought first impression on a choice scarf Pokemon? I don't know, but it worked out brilliantly here. I did not see first impression coming. What is the most important, uh, the most important thing for me in this battle is if I had stayed in on turn one and gone for my U-turn against the Slitherwing also using U-turn, I would have known turn one that it was scarfed. That means that I would not have brought in my Dodrio to die to it. Given that I basically played this entire battle with only three Pokemon versus six, I am incredibly happy. With how this turned out um but thank you very much j ricky for the battle and thank you all so much for watching please be sure to check out his side of the battle in the comments and the description below and um since we finally brought mousehold off the bench really there's only one more thing to do three blind mice three blind mice See Three how blind they run. mice. See Three how blind they run. mice. They all See run how the they run. Wife, she cut off See the how with the they run. Knife. They all run up to the farmer's wife. Three she cut off the tails mice. with the carving knife. Three Have you ever seen mice. such a setting in your life? Three blind, blind mice. See Three how blind they run. mice. See, See how they how run. run. They all See ran after the farmer's wife. She cut off the tails with the carving knife. Have you ever seen such a setting in your life? Three blind mice. See how they run, see how they run. They all ran after the farmer's wife. She cut off the tails with the carving knife. Have you ever seen such a sight in your life? Three blind mice. Have you ever seen such a sight in your life? Three blind mice.